These are some of the most disturbing retailed stories ever. And there is a small reminder. Subscribe to my channel to receive the best videos that we upload always. Now let's move on. Story 1. She admits that some of the specifics may not be apparent because this occurred roughly a year and a half ago. When she was about 20 years old, the girl had a part-time job as a cashier at a grocery shop. She worked on Wednesday, Thursday and Friday nights since she attended school. She didn't live far from the business and the parking lot was well lit. Around it, there were a few other shops and a petrol station. One day, a somewhat large man stood at 5-5 and appeared. His name was Marlin. She was asked if she had a boyfriend. That she said yes was true. Sean, a somewhat tall and slender man who appeared to be his age or younger, approached him. She discovered that Sean was the one who was interested in her after Marlin told him she had a boyfriend. He was flirting with me at first, saying she was lying or insinuating that she could still talk to him even though she had a boyfriend. She initially laughed a little bit before carrying on, not because she was attracted to him or trying to flirt back with him, but because she really believed that it was just his attempt to continue flirting as some men my age tend to do. She assumed that he would continue with his work after that. He eventually went away from the counter, and both guys entered the shop. Before they left out for good, Sean came back and continued to kind of flirt with her before. They left with no groceries. Sean returned a day or two later. She was unsurprised to see him again. She had thought that, like many of our customers, resided in the neighborhoods next to the business. He stood back up and attempted flirting once more. All he kept doing was making an effort to downplay any relationship she might have had. Once more, she assumed it was just his poor attempt to strike up a conversation. She was now a little confused as to why he was so adamant about speaking to her. Due to the epidemic, she covered her face while working, thus he never really got to see her whole face. She simply left it off. Sean's attempt to talk to her disturbed her. If he contacted her again, she made the decision to just ignore him or tell him to leave her alone. This time, her manager requested that she clean up the carts in their tiny lobby. As the sun eventually set, she was confident she wouldn't see Sean again until the morning. She observed his entrance as soon as she started to relax. She attempted to turn away from the door and occupy herself with cleaning a cart in the expectation that he would walk into the shop without noticing her. She tried to ignore him, but he wouldn't go away. Unfortunately, he noticed her, however, and said, Dang, you don't want to talk to me. She tried to ignore him, but he continued. She turned around and tried to make it evident that he was bothering her. She expressed that she was not of interest in him. He continued playing it off, but soon he entered the shop. It was just beginning to get dark when she was instructed to fetch carts from the outside. She used the time to phone her mother and inform her that Sean was back. She had to contact her father the night before to urge him to wait for her when she got off the bus because she was worried that Sean would be there. To understand what was going on, Sean also started asking about the shifts she worked. In case Sean came to talk to her again, she wanted someone to be on the phone with her. It came as no surprise when he and his friend approached her in the parking lot. What do you want? She questioned. When the talk came to an end, he said something along the lines of, I'll see you later, and he walked away. He walked around the corner of the shop. She saw this as a clear threat at this time because he was aware that she was not enjoying his company. She told Michael, another security guard, about Sean and how uncomfortable she was. He claimed to have seen Sean and his friends hanging around in front of the store just before they approached her. Sean casually showed a gun to his friends in the side of his pants in front of Michael. She had no idea why he had chosen to target her. She was informed that her mother was coming because she was upset. Her mom instructed her to inform them that she would be departing early, but she didn't want to leave right away for some reason. 
My dad was waiting for me in the car, and also my mom and sister. Her mother told her that when her father arrived, he noticed a black car parked in the lot that eventually drove away. She informed the store manager that she didn't feel comfortable and wouldn't be coming in for the upcoming few days. She continues to wonder to this day what would have happened that evening if she hadn't notified her parents. Story number two. A man worked at a tiny grocery store. The man mostly filled shelves in the vegetable department. When he didn't have much work to do in the business or when it was quiet, he would frequently hide in the back room and use his phone. He entered the store's back area one day when the firm wasn't particularly busy and began using his phone. He heard the doors to the back room swing open after returning there. He went into the bathroom that was behind there and quietly locked the door because he thought it was his boss or a co-worker, and he had some time before they would arrive. Both of them approached him from a distance that seemed to be around 15 feet away before beginning to converse. But neither his bosses nor any other co-worker's voice did he recognize. Then he picked up some of what they were saying. Additionally, he heard one of them mention a car in the back. Soon enough, he was able to figure out that they were stealing the store. Because it was an older, smaller store, it didn't have the best security. They continued talking and eventually, it appeared that they were planning to leave. His walkie-talkie generated a bip notice at once. To ensure that it wouldn't create any more noise, he quickly switched it off. Robbers heard that and were confused. One of the men inquired about the noise. As they moved towards the washroom, one of them loudly knocked on the door twice. The robbers then gave the worker the order to get out in a very serious tone. The employee made the choice to speak the first thing that entered his head. He informed the robbers that the police had been called and were on the way. It appeared to work. The man remained silent and heard both of them leave at the same time. He remained there for some time. He entered the store again, and the police, who had in fact been contacted by someone else, arrived soon after. These are some of the most untrustable situations that could occur in groceries. Thanks for staying until the end of this video, and don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and tell us what you think about this video in the comments section. Let's meet again soon with another video.